Okay, we don't really know what we want, but we want something. I mean, there, there has been, science has not been completely wild over the last 4,000 years. We want something. I mean, we want something that we call scientific beauty, we, we something that we call understanding, okay? And that, in principle, could be defined, okay? I don't know how to define it, and thus, that's why, at this moment, I don't have a loop. I have a semi-loop, and then I close it here and say, okay, do I like this theory or not, okay? And at this point, I am the judge of this. Do I like this theory? Not that that dissolves my problem. Is do I like this theory? It's, it's, a, it's an aesthetic answer that I'm looking for. At some point, if I am able to to to, to decide something, it, it it is not. I mean, I I don't I don't really know how to do it. I'm, this is a plea for for ideas from the from the from the from the room. Okay, even, even I mean from from the room or from you. <laughs> I, I would propose a test. So, how do you do a thesis validation? It's very in, uh, um, um, simple. You have a hypothesis A, a hypothesis B, and the hypothesis who gets the most of the money is the one which wins, because essentially this hypothesis is used, distributed on workshops, and so on. So, this is how you can uh, um, um, classify hypotheses. No, maybe. I mean and, um, and, uh, so, so, uh, please let me elaborate. And, and, and now we can go further. So, uh, can we. Uh, uh, um, can, can we automate our research in such a way that we have a robot which submits our proposal and then we get some money back? And then it generates a, 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 a And then we get again money back. To the some extent, part of our game here is getting money. That, that's a very cynical way of looking <laughs> at it, which is, but, but, <laughs> which but, might but, be but, true. But, 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 it's, but it's very measurable. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, that, that's called the, the, the hype machine, uh, which is also well known. But no, I mean, this, this is something, I mean, you, you have to, to, to realize that you are speaking about now. I mean, when you think of this 100 years ago, the, the, point, the point was not getting money, the point was getting uh, uh, understanding. You look at somebody like Lord Kelvin, I mean, he was rich, I and mean, he was not looking for money, he was still trying to understand things, he was trying to convince. Essentially, you, 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 I mean, one of the things that you, that, uh, I mean, when I grew up in the Max Planck Institute, that we have to solve the hardest problem we can possibly do and, and in order to, uh, I'm, I'm sure we had, that we are sufficiently smart, so nothing about funding and so on, but uh, now, now you cannot do very, you can do very little with, 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 with your money. I mean, I was train in America and then live in Spain after that. The Spanish system is like the, the American system. I have been writing proposals all my life. I mean, I, I understand that part, but I don't consider that my work as a scientist. That's what happens. I mean, that, 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 I mean that's something that I have to do because I have to do, okay? But I mean, yes, yes, but that's, that, 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 I mean, I do that mostly for my students. I mean, my students have to leave. Um, my wife also wants to <laughs> to buy <laughs> groceries every now and then, but that's another point. I mean, there is something there is something about a, su a successful theory. I mean, not a hypothesis. I mean, hypotheses are being tested here, okay? And that, that that's easily automatable. A hypothesis is something that explains the data or doesn't explain the data, and that's something that can be done. I mean, that that that, that, that can be outsourced to to a uh, computer. There, there is no mystery for that. That's quantifiable, okay? There's how many things you misclassify, there's uh, how many things, uh, how good is your approximation to the, to the leaf, leaf coefficient of your, of your plane. Th th those are things which are, I mean, can be done. Uh, what happens here is something, something different. I mean, it has to do something with the, how fertile is your idea, or how fertile is the idea that came from this. I mean, can you use this, this uh, insight that most of the, of the Vortices here are paired into something which is a dipole, not a correlating pair, which is, I mean, that, that, that is new. I mean, I, I, I didn't uh, know that. That happens to be true, okay? Uh, this is, is that something that you can use for the next iteration or not, okay? Is there something that can be, can be used to, um, to redefine your meta questions? I started with meta questions, okay? That, 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 that's the part that is missing. It doesn't seem to me impossible, but it seems to me uh, difficult. I mean, I, I've been talking to, to very strange people 
about this, I've been talking to philosophers, neurologists, and people like that. They, they all have different uh, 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 explanations for what I'm looking for. But they, they have explanations, especially when you talk to the, I mean, to the uh, neurologists. It's very, it's very scary what they tell you. They have very clear that we are machines. <laughs> That, 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 that we are machines, and they, they think they know how we work, which is even worse. <laughs> okay. I have a question. You're, you're proposing that a dipole is something which is less co uh, is more correlated than a vortex pair. Yeah. Yeah. But what is when we think about vortex pair in which are disturbed by shears, and there's, that means that the vortex pair is there, but less correlated, but even also it is a vortex pair, then you don't need don't need dipoles, which means you are lo looking for a, for a certain yeah, artifact. No, if no, you go no, back no, no. to a less correlated vortex pair, then it would be correct to think about vortex pairing. For example, you see it in the Helmholtz, uh, Kelvin, Kelvin Helmholtz instability, the vortex pairing processes, and so on. It seems to be more fundamental. In a, I mean, in a, in a large scale shear layer, yes. Yeah, but there I are mean, a lot not of shear layers yeah. there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that the dipoles are more correlated than the than the vortex pairs. I'm saying first that looking at things that have a causal effect. I mean, something that we're doing something, something, something that I when I change it, when I disrupt it, something happens after five turnovers or ten turnovers, something of that order. I found dipoles. I found isolated vortices. I never found vortex pairs. There was. Never something that came out as a as a as, as a vortex pair. The dipoles came out by by uh, themselves. I did not put them there. Okay. Yeah, but but and what then, is but what is pairing is a typical sign of two D turbulence. Excuse me. The vortex pairing process is a typical sign in in two D turbulence. Yeah. Well, I mean that, that's probably why we don't see it and why it's not important because they pair, yeah. and then they kill they 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 kill each other and they they create a bigger vortex. But dipoles are, 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 are long leaf. And then the, the next question is, when I go, I mean, forget about all these questions of cause and effect and, uh, and, 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 and selective, say, okay, I look at what is in there and I try to find, to find pairs and I don't, I, I, don't, I, I don't bias, which is the choice of my, my, closest, my closest neighbor. My closest neighbor is, something, is predominantly something with the opposite sign. And this is statistics. I mean, this is blind statistics done over, um, I think it's like 20,000 of this, of this raw field, okay? You see dipoles and you don't see vortex pairs. Most probably because the vortex pairs have already paired, okay? And the dipoles don't, the, the dipoles, actually, I mean, you think of what the dipole is doing in retrospect. And the dipole, I mean, there is a reason why a dipole is more stable. A dipole doesn't, I mean, doesn't spend kinetic energy. A dipole has no charge, basically. There is a neutron. Okay? It's something that goes through the through the through turbulence. It moves by, by itself and, and that, that doesn't interact strongly with the rest of the of the, of the, of the, of the flow until it really crashes into something else. Okay? And you can see, I mean, it's, it's something that is a, a lot of fun. You make a, a simulation of two turbulence with point vortices and let it run. It's a Hamiltonian system. It will run forever. And then you see these dipoles that form, and they, they go like this, they go like a straight line, they go like bullets, and then they crash into, into something else. Then they are unfaithful, and this, this guy goes with this other guy. This other guy now is, is alone, a jeep, they go like that. And it keeps happening and happening and happening. And the, 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 the corrotating pairs don't do that. The corrotating pairs, because they have energy, they are expensive to, 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 to make and to, to maintain. Apparently, they, are, they don't happen as, as often. But uh, <coughs> I mean, I, I'm not <coughs> particularly interested now in 2D turbulence. I, I was interested in the process, in the process by which a computer was able to tell me something that then I can sit down and say, oh, well, this is nice, okay. And I would like to, somebody to automatize for me this process of saying, hey, this is nice, okay? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if I understand your talk correctly, uh, you have a 2D decaying turbulence and you divide the DNS domain into multiple subdomains and then uh, you make a particular subdomain, vorticity in a subdomain as you set it to some zero value and see how does it evolve. Well, zero value or yes, some other. Or, yeah, yeah. I mean, some, 
I mean, so there's, I think there are like 10 or 12 different experiments in which yep. I randomly do things. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, when you make a change uh, to a state uh, by setting the vorticity artificially to some other value, so how much consistent it is with the, say, the vorticity transfer equation? Say, for example, if it was uh, inviscid 2D flow, you will have no vortex stretching term, you will not have vortex dissipation term, and then your transfer equation for vorticity will equal to be zero. And now if you are arbitrarily setting a vorticity in a subdomain to some other value, then you are changing the conservation law. No, no, I mean, okay, so, I mean, there are two things. First, in, in 2D there is never vortex stretching. I mean, it's, uh, with viscosity or without viscosity, there is no vortex stretching. That's what makes 2D turbulence uh, easy, okay? And then, I am not setting the vorticity to zero. I am comparing two initial conditions. One initial condition had a vortex there, the other initial condition had no vortex there. So it's not something that uh, uh, disappears like that. Okay? Uh, there are other things that have to be done. I mean, uh, the, the vorticity into this is, 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 is okay. It's almost okay, you have to adjust, I mean, because something, I mean, uh, for something like this, which is uh, uh, periodic, the total circulation has to be zero. That initial condition, you have to add a little, uh, I mean, background vorticity to make the sure that that's true. In the case in which you are changing the, the velocity, you have to do something about continuity. Uh, so there is, you, you change the velocity and then do a pressure step, basically, in which you say the continuity is changing things, okay? In 3D turbulence, you have to do that for vorticity and for the vel uh, velocity. But you, you, you don't have to think of something like happens to the flow right now. If there are different initial conditions, okay? Okay, which is when the two initial conditions are different, which are the different which are important and which are different which are not. Okay? Yes, uh, thanks for your talk, Professor. Uh, so uh, my question is uh, related to uh, extending uh, your, uh, related to your current work. So uh, would it be the similar approach in three dimensions, especially related to the causation factors? as well as uh, are these dipoles relevant in three dimensions as well. And the second question is, so I see that if I'm not wrong, the number of simulations which you have taken in three, di three dimensions is somewhere around 100, whereas it's around 2 million in uh, two dimensions. So would this be sufficient for your understanding? Or uh, could you please share uh, your current observations? Well, the, 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 first, the first question is, whether this can be done in, in 3D, we are doing it in, 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 in uh, 3D. I'm interested, in, I mean, basically interested in 3D turbulence. And this is, has been running for, I mean, there, there, there is a postdoc that has been running for the, for the past six months on and off because she's still finishing her thesis somewhere, okay? But the, this is being done in 3D and it's not, it's not different. The, the details are different, of course. I mean, the code is different, uh, as I was telling just now. When you change the velocity, you have to, uh, I mean, satisfy uh, continuity for the velocity. So you have to do something. When you change the vorticity in 3D, you also have to do that. I mean, you, you, you just, I mean, the, the, the vorticity is uh, solenoidal in, in, in 3D, and you have to make sure that you do something with, with the vortex. You have to put something in there instead. Okay, but it can be done. I mean, it's still because these experiments are not supposed to be. A smart experiment, at least in my first, I mean, uh, uh, Monte Carlo run. They're not supposed to be a smart experiment, but random experiment. Okay, these are as, as random as any other, okay? And then the question of cost, uh, well, yes, sure. in 3D is more expensive. But as, as I told you, it's not much more expensive. It was more expensive because I had to buy a, a, a cluster of GPUs. But once you, you buy the cluster of GPUs, GPUs are actually fast enough that you can you can play with 3D flows, okay? It could not be done in the cluster in which I was doing this, which is a cluster of, an inter-cluster up, which is by now almost 10 years old, but. Maybe I have a quick question. Um, in your notes, you wrote a sentence that I really liked a lot when you said, uh, this note takes the, the, view, the view that randomness is an admission of ignorance that should be avoided whenever possible. And so my question for you is, do you think that this sentence will still be true in 20 years, 30 years, or 40 or 50 years? I think that if you can avoid randomness, please do. I mean, randomness is, 
is a, a recognition that you don't know anything, that, that, that you don't know about something. I say, okay, well, let's do it randomly and hope that something comes out, okay? If you have a, I mean, you, you, you have an understanding and you know for sure that there is nothing else hidden somewhere else, then please avoid randomness. If you are not sure that there is something else, okay? Then do something random just in case, okay? Thank you. This is my, my problem always with uh, biology. They tell me life works this way. I said, no, the life you know works this well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? There's one there. And then maybe I propose we go for a coffee, okay? <coughs> Fabio is faster than me. Uh, thank you for the talk. It's a very interesting uh, idea, um, new method. And um, my thought was basically about whether or not you could come up with a way to reject or accept some explanation. And my thought is that maybe, you know, what it, whichever structure that you pick up or something, it has to be governed by equations somehow. You know, it's not random, like you said, so there should be some some explanation, some equation like a... Reynolds stress uh, equation, which describes how this motion is being preserved somehow in the flow. And then my second question is, if there is, then could we imagine maybe creating a, a new kind of, of uh, inner product, which basically searched for these particular structures. So you do a POD, not an energy, but maybe there's some other, th there's some other quantity, which is actually more relevant than energy. And if we chose that as an inner product, we would suddenly pop out these kind of structures. You mean, well, I mean that, uh, you mean whether the norm that I am using to, to compare with this, whether two things are, are different or not, and using the, the energy norm. Is that what it will whether it, it will be different with, 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 with different norm? No, my question, basically like if, if we're looking for structures inside a flow, one, one way we do it is, is to, do, to compute the POD, right? Because we say that energy is important, and we ask an algorithm to give us structures which maximize energy per mode. But we don't get dipoles when we do POD on turbulence. Because if we did... Are you speaking about my talk today or my talk on Monday? Um, in just in talk, general, actually. Well, in my talk on Monday, I was looking for, for structures. Here, I'm not looking for structures. and letting the computer do whatever it wants, and then I fish a structure. Yeah, yeah, but dipole is a structure, no? I yes, mean, you, you asked the question, you asked the question, what's important uh, to, what's the structure that I need to preserve some input throughout the field? So you're, you're, you're really asking what happens if I use a different norm? Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, would it be possible to invent a new norm based off what this tells you? Um, it's certainly possible to invent a new norm, but this, thing, this whole thing was repeated with L2 for the velocity, L2 for the vorticity. L infinity for the velocity and L infinity for the, 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 the vorticity. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the reasons why I, I need, needed two million runs here was that because I repeated everything in many different ways. There seemed to be no, no big difference between using L2, I mean, any quadratic norm for the velocity or for the vorticity. The results were essentially the same. The, the L infinity, which are maximum difference between two things, Tend to, tended to give things that were more concentrated, okay? But still, I mean, the, 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 the answer were still vortices and dipoles, okay? But it was a little different. Eh? <coughs> Taking as, as norm the velocity and the vorticity, which I didn't want to, to pre-put into the, into the problem, make no difference, okay? That, does that answer your question? I and think so. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you.